Whether you're a suburban athlete or an Olympic champion, you've got to work hard to get results. We've put over 15 years' experience into developing Active Man, combining vitamins, minerals, and proteins. Active Man helps provide you with the nutrients you need to optimize performance and assist recovery. Discover the Active Man range now available. Active Man, power up. Welcome to this week's Power Progress podcast. And this week, I've got David Souter, who was on series number two. And this time we've got to do it in person because we're allowed to, now, yeah. aren't we? So that's a good thing. But we're going to talk about fatherhood and fitness because David's actually a father right now. This I'm is, looking this is to my be a son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking to be a father. So I want a bit of insight what it's like. We're both in fitness, very similar sort of, we kind of do online, we do in person and stuff like that. So first of all, how are you doing, mate? You good? I'm good. I'm very good. <laughs> You're looking very good. Hold it. Holiday, two holidays, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Well, kind of weddings, which is always have a bit different feel because you're kind of living through someone else's holiday to a certain degree, aren't you? Because yeah, you kind of you want to please them since they're with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's things planned, but yeah, we we had uh, these two holidays abroad, and then we also went to the lakes, which is quite decent as well. Nice. Yeah. yeah, you get the weather; it's beautiful. Though. Yeah, yeah. And you've been on holiday yourself, haven't you? Yeah, oh, back in March. Yeah, God, was that, 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 that well, seems like that was actually talking about that was the first holiday I took my daughter on. Because of COVID, so she, when COVID started, she was one and a half. Yeah. So it wasn't really a good time to take her on holiday. And we're going through anyway, other stuff. So when COVID struck, I couldn't take her away. I was dying to take her on holiday. Yeah, we went to Poland. Um, and she was four and she went skiing. <laughs> I remember <laughs> seeing a lot of the stories actually. I've got a great time. Yeah. She's, she's, so to go skiing, we got this instructor and he was about eight foot tall, the biggest hands I've ever seen. And my daughter's tiny. And he took a skiing, and then after a couple of runs, because I had to go and do a run with her first, then she was confident with him. After a couple of runs with it, where they're gone, and they were over in the corner, and she'd force him to make a snowman. She said, I'm only going to do, I'll only do the rest of the runs if you make a snowman. And it had to have hair. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it for her. But, oh, it's amazing. So, yeah. so let's start with the holiday. What, did, what was the difference in your holiday with having a little one to when you've done it on your own? I'll be honest, right? I had... Because of the first holiday, and when you have your child, especially first one, you stress and worry about everything. You always think about the worst scenario, so yeah. you're prepared. So I was thinking, oh, what happens if her ears hurt on the plane? What happens if she gets niggly? What happens if she needs a toilet? What happens if she's sick? What happens all this? And it's we, we only went to Poland, so it wasn't a long flight. Yeah. Um, but there was a, a long journey from the airport mm. to the, uh, and she absolutely was absolutely perfect. Um, she 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 sat at the airport looking at the planes. She was good as gold. I think keeping kids entertained is the trick. Yeah, you know, once they get bored, but everything was brand new to her, so mm. it was great. On the plane, she was good as gold. She'd already planned where the seats were, where I was sitting, where my girlfriend was sitting, where she sat, and she was good as gold. Yeah. Um, and then when we got off the plane, she was shattered, so she fell asleep. Fell asleep. You know? Brilliant. Um, <laughs> the same that we did thought we did think she'd poo herself in the transit car <laughs> because we all smelt this smell. I was like, oh my god, is that my daughter? <laughs> and I had a looked in her pants, it was just a pump, <laughs> but it was a very smelly one. So I was thinking, oh, I don't want to change her nappy in this car, <laughs> yeah. But she was good as gold, and we had a pool there as well. And yeah, she, I mean, that's it was like that having, having a pool, you could make her do anything you want, yeah. If you do this, you can go in the pool. Mm. So you've always got to have like have the carrot. Yeah. What I find works with my daughter, the carrot works a lot more than the stick because, <laughs> because my stick's very weak. <laughs> I hate her off. Um, with, with in t- so in terms of when you were traveling first off, did, was it did it require a lot more planning? Yes. Before it, yeah. So, <clears throat> um, food, snacks, all that. Um, and what you'll find is when you've got a child and any mothers, fathers out there, is they come first, and you don't even come second. You just you don't exist. So if if you want food or anything, <laughs> forget it. Uh, I mean, I remember when I first had it, and I was just by myself here, and you're making cups of tea, and it's always cold. And then you'll go to put your cup of tea in the microwave, and there'll be another cup of tea that you put in the microwave, but you haven't even turned on. That's <laughs> gone cold, and there's cups of tea everywhere which you can't drink. You eat as soon as she sleeps. You eat, and as soon as you finish eating, you think, right, I'll have a nap. And as soon as you you, you finish eating, she wakes up again, <laughs> and it's just nonstop. Um, it's not hard work. Yeah, it's just consistent. Yeah, nonstop. 
Um, but yeah, just planning it, um, having, I mean, hey, when we were kids, uh, well, I'm older than you, but when we, when I was a kid, I was looking at Donkey Kong, you know, yes. um, yeah. now there's phones and everything, so you yeah. can download YouTube and, and now TV and Sky and everything, so we had loads of, but she didn't have, she didn't want it. No. Um, with the plane and everything, she's quite happy to talk and interact. Yeah. And she's quite, she's quite mature for age. She'll talk and ask questions and stuff. So, and I don't like having screen time that yeah. much, but it's, it's a nice uh, to have it just in case. Yeah. I was going to say, that might be another conversation altogether because I've had conversations about how much that it can hinder some, mm. a child being stuck on a screen. Yeah. But it sounds like you've kind of, encouraged her to be more interpersonal with people. What I've found is, yeah, she is, is I mean, you've just seen before, if I want to say hello to somebody, it's don't you say hello. So, <laughs> you know, she she loves being naughty, yeah. but loves being naughty in a cute way, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and she'll say hello just to annoy me. Yeah. But I've, I've built that myself because I've annoyed her all her life. <laughs> As a young child, I used to tease her. Um, and with, even with her food and stuff, and she does that with sweets. Do you want yeah. this, Daddy? And I go, Well, that's nice, thank you. And then she goes, Nah. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so I think your kid will copy everything you do. As mm. soon as I do a joke with her, she wants to do it back. If I do a trick, she wants to do the trick back. Yeah. And watching a kid do a trick <laughs> is funny the first time, but the, the, the 517th time ain't funny no more. <laughs> So you've got to have a lot of patience. Yeah, I'm sure. And obviously, when we talk about the fitness side, I always sort of, it, you come first to certain degree in terms of fitness because obviously you know, you've got to get your food right and obviously we've got, we're very active in the day. That must be so hard to have that switch, if you know what I mean. I, I completely agree. What I've found is because I have most of my clients, the majority of my clients were women, I would say 80 to 90% of my clients are women and a good 70% of them were women from families with kids. Um, and I'm giving them diet plans and diet advice, and nutrition advice, and do this, don't do that. And they're like, it's so hard though, I've got kids and everything. I said, yes, but just, just be dedicated, just do. And then you don't realize until you're in their shoes. Yeah. So right now we've got big packs of crisps. There's a box of sweeties, there's chocolates, there's all sorts Yeah. because she likes to snack. Kids don't like meals, they like to snack. So <laughs> they will play with a meal. Yeah. And then five minutes later, I want to snack. Um, which is pretty good though she doesn't have many sweets and when she does she's just nitpick but what you'll find is I was brought up I don't like I'll, I'll, I'll lick my plate clean at home yeah um, people hate it but I just I, I will not not finish it yes I've got to eat every scrap <laughs> my girlfriend always leaves with one little bit <laughs> it annoys the hell out of us and I think she does on purpose now but if if my daughter my daughter's not going to finish a meal you know you give her as much food as possible and as healthy as possible and she'll leave bits and bobs and I eat it. I don't even give the dogs. I'll just, I'll just, just go the it down. So, uh -huh. yeah. it's, it's just one of those things. And somebody's just left half a yogurt and just yeah. put it in. But all those add up. You yeah, know, I've got it. Yeah. Yeah, I've got it for a week. You add them all up. It could be 200, 300 calories a day. Yeah. At the end of seven, that's 2,100 calories. Yeah. Just quick maths. <laughs> um, so it's a lot and it's never healthy. It's never healthy. Um, I mean, kids, fish fingers and all sorts of like, rubbish, you know, but fish fingers would be a healthy choice for her. Yeah. You know, she has a lot of pasta, sausages. Um, she has oats, which is good. Um, but it, it is very hard to give them healthy stuff. Yeah. But I find with kids, they've got so much energy. Mm. You just you just put any fuel in them, yeah. they'll burn it off and they'll grow. Yes. I think what we're looking at is at the minute, as long as she's eating. When, when she was very young, she was eating, um, she was having broccoli and peas. That was a, a, a veg. Yeah. Didn't see her for about five months. And, she was, and when she came back, no veg at all. Um, so it's, and I think we are co-parent. Yeah. So, which is good and bad. You you won't be co-parent. So you can have um, consistency and she'll be eating the same things. You can have a routine. So when she comes here, our routine is completely different. Yeah. I, know, I don't know what our routine is down there. Um, but it's fine and healthy foods that she'll eat up here. Mm. And it's just testing, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, pasta. She loves pasta. No sauce, nothing else. And what she loves doing with pasta, putting a bit in her mouth and then putting a bit in the dog's mouth. <laughs> so they both meet in the middle. So it's disgusting. <laughs> the dogs love it. I don't. But she eats pasta. So, yeah, it's 
in, in trying to get your food as well because you're not cooking the same food as her. Yeah. So if you've got clients who haven't got kids right now, this, this is a big bit of advice. If you've got, like right now you haven't got kids. Yeah. But hopefully you're going to have kids soon. Right now, get as many exercises as possible in, as many workouts and as much good nutrition as possible. And then when, right now, before you have kids, work out how much time it takes you to cook these meals, exercise. Now, try and fit in cooking for other kids. Yeah. Right? Then watching them eat, then cleaning them, then cleaning their plates, and then you're allowed to cook your food. <laughs> However, when you cook your food, Daddy, Daddy, watch me do this. Watch me do this. Daddy, can I have a snack? It's like, I am trying to have my breakfast, and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm not even joking. Sometimes I'm, I don't have breakfast because yeah. there's just no time. Yeah. Now, I know that sounds bad, and there'll be some others out there going, oh, you just need to have a routine. <laughs> I'm shadows. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm still, I still do my workouts. What I do love is she comes in and she does workouts with me. Yeah. So getting a bit off nutrition, she watches me do the classes. And I do think from watching me do the classes, one, she learned to count very early, and she can count backwards now. She can count to 100, and she's four. She's not even started school yet. She can count to 100, and she can do it very fast. Yeah. So it's it's not even thinking. But she can count back from 10 very fast. And that's from watching me, because I count back from eight a lot. Um, and she does all the exercises very proficiently, better than some of my clients. Um, but what I've tried to do is, if you want to get big, because she, she's always saying, Daddy's got big muscles. I want yeah. big muscles. She'll yeah. watch TV and say, you could beat him up because you've got big <laughs> muscles. And it's um, and we're always having fun fights, but I will say if you want to get big and strong, you've got to eat good food. So you've got to have your chicken, you've got to have your she loves ham, so things like that. She, she, it's trying to get across to her in a fun way. If you want this, you've got to do this. Yeah. So that's a carrot again. If when I was a kid, it's you're not leaving that table till you eat every scrap. Yeah. Well, I was too same, same. I was too frightened to leave the table. Yeah, I'm yeah. good height. Yeah. Well, I, I, I couldn't hit it. So it's totally different. No, it's, now, I, it? yeah. you, I mean, you're, I think, yeah, not right. I think you're allowed to like, give them the spine and stuff. One of my clients said, oh, you just, just hit them on the hand. Yeah. And I remember once she was being naughty and I thought, right, I'm going to hit her in the hand. And then I stopped it because I thought, what happens if I hit her too lightly? She's going to think, dad's weak. <laughs> and I was like, what happens if I hit her too hard and break her wrist? I thought, I'm not going to. So what I do is I sit her down in, <laughs> this will sound bad, but I try and make her feel guilty. Yeah. Do you want to hurt daddy? You know, she like if she hits me or something, do you want to hurt daddy? Do you not like daddy? Do you not want daddy to play with you? So again, it's that carrot. Yeah. If you want daddy to play with you and be like you and be your best friend, yeah. Don't hit daddy. Yeah. Eat the food. You're almost teaching her the consequences of the action she does. Exactly. In a sense. Yeah. 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 It's I've I've got dogs in <laughs> it's a bit like training dogs. You need consistency. Yeah. But with dogs. It, it's you, you haven't got the talk mm. with her she's now four she understands everything i say yeah she'll sometimes pretend she doesn't but she understands it all um and she's pretty astute yeah but yeah when i was a kid nine o'clock at night and i'd have cold stew and steak which is like eating more boots yeah and i'd be eating that, trying to give it to the dog but that that told her that give her some steak and some veg and some carrots or whatever i said you're not going to bed until you that you go good i don't want to go to bed and then she'd be off playing as soon as I turned me back. So I'd have to sit, my time would be spent sitting in front of her. When my mom and dad, they would leave me in the kitchen. They yeah. would get on with their life. And I'd be sitting at the table going, I ain't moving from this chair because as soon as I step down, my mom's going to come through there and smack. Yeah. That was just the way it was. Yeah, totally different. And it worked. Yeah. And I wish we were there still. Yeah. <laughs> just things have changed so much. Yeah, yeah. I think what springs to mind is two things here. So someone listening. One is... If someone's listening who, who is a mother, which is obviously your main clientele, mm -hmm. and they want to be better with their food and eating with, say, they've got one or two children. Mm -hmm. So it comes from that side, and then maybe the other side is um, you kind of already touched on it anyway, but the actual child itself, mm -hmm. how do they, how do you encourage them to mm -hmm. get into exercise and eating, mm -hmm. which obviously we're associated with that. So yeah, it might well, be easy. Well, actually, you've just touched on something there. Yeah. Um, so you've got... A mother, who's there's my little daughter there. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a mother who's struggling to eat healthy, and then we've got the daughter, our, our son, who won't eat healthy. Yeah, and has lots of unhealthy food which you will eat. Yeah, which is temptation for the mother. So she, even if we take the child out of the situation, yeah, the mother's struggling already to eat healthy. She's yeah. put weight on. 
Yeah, and we're helping her put weight out to lose the weight. And now she's got to find the time to cook this healthy food as well as cook healthy food for her son or daughter and to help them eat that food as well. Now, there is another aspect is if the, if the, <clears throat> the kids are watching their parents eat healthy food, they're more inclined to copy that action. Yes. Um, my daughter doesn't, it doesn't matter what I eat. She might go, what are you eating? I'll go this. And it could be, it could be pancakes. Ooh, yeah. that looked horrible. We'll try it. No. So she's, she's that child that won't try anything. Yeah. She knows what she likes. She's yeah. wrong, but she'll just like certain foods. Yeah. Where you've got other kids who are like, they're greedy. Yeah. And it's like, what you've got, they want what they haven't got. So whatever the parents eat, I want to try it. Yeah. Five times out of 10, they love it. Five times out of 10, Ooh, it's horrible. Yeah. But at least they try it. Which mm -hmm. I think for once kids get a little bit older, that's when they don't want to try anything. Yeah. You know, uh, well, hey, you've probably got clients. Try this, try that. Oh, no, I don't like that. Yeah. Have yeah. you had it before? No, but it looks horrible. Yeah. And it's about just try it. Mm -hmm. You know, once you once you get used to something, yeah, the taste buds change. Uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but my first beer was awful. Yeah, so now yeah. I love a beer. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, the first time I had a, a, a rum. Yeah. Disgusting. Love rum. You yeah. know, it, not a lot, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's one of those things we society says drink is fun, so we'll we'll persist until we like drink. Yeah. However, people won't persist in having platefuls of veg. Yeah. It doesn't taste nice. Yeah. You know, it's not cold sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's it's not no, it's a social thing. Let's go yeah. and have some vegetables. Yeah, yeah. But vegetables is so much healthier than having alcohol. Yeah. It's not as much fun. So you've got to weigh up. Um, I mean you'll be a lot happier if you eat vegetables. Yeah. But you'll get a lot of pleasure from drinking alcohol. Mm. And my, I, I, especially my age, nearly fifty, is being happy is more is is I get a lot more out of being consistently happy yeah. than those small pleasures. Yeah, I've had my small pleasures through my life, partying and club and everything. I've yeah. done that. Now, I want, my happiness is being with my daughter. Yeah, having time to go to the gym, staying fit, uh, eating well. Yeah, you know, having energy. Um, where when you're younger, you've got energy. Yeah, you don't need you don't to know about managing yeah. that as such. Yeah. yeah, and that is another thing right now is if you're planning to have a child, is and I say that this to my clients as well is oh, I didn't have time to do a workout, I didn't feel like doing a workout, I didn't have the motivation to do a workout, I wasn't yeah. inspired to do a workout, and then they get ill, yeah, and they can't work out. So all of a sudden, they didn't work out for a week because they couldn't be bothered, and then they're ill, and when they're ill, they text me, oh. I wish I wasn't there. Like, I really want to do a workout now. Mm. So you had the chance to do a workout. Yeah. You know, it's all well to look back in time and, yeah. and I wish I'd done that workout now. If you've got the chance to do a workout and yeah. you've got the chance to eat healthy, do it. Mm. You know, if you're able bodied and you've got the time and you might not want to have the time, you might want to sit down and watch Netflix. Yes. We're talking 45 minutes. Yeah. You can do it in your home. You could go for a walk, you know, for an hour, or you could sit on the sofa thinking about doing it. And then all of a sudden it's 10 o'clock. Oh, I start again. Too late now. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. it's not 10 o'clock. Go for a quick walk. Yeah. Go to bed at 11. Yeah. You know, get up. I'll, I'll go to bed at 10 rather than 11. Get up an hour early yeah. and do that walk and work at the morning. It's about that little, what I call the self nudge principle, mm -hmm. where you just got to think of the reward before. Even if you don't want to, because we'll have it. We, we enjoy doing the workout. We don't always feel like doing it. But we have it in our neurology, our habit mm -hmm. to at least. Do it. And sometimes a case of just thinking, just start it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I also think sometimes I read this, uh, it's the five second rule or mm. the 10 second rule or something. So you can try it in bed. If, you, if you've got nothing to get it for, say it's a Sunday morning. Yeah. And you wake up and you think, will I get out of bed? Will I not sin this? Will I do a workout? I've got the opportunity, but I've had a busy day. Yeah. Or it's been a hard week. Or I've got a busy day tomorrow. Maybe I need to have an hour and sit and do nothing. But Count to five. Yeah. Count to five and just do it. Wrong thing. Yeah. Should I do it? Should I not? One, two, three, four, five. Just do it. Yeah. And if you're not going to do it at five, forget it. Yeah. Now, when you when you have that opportunity and you you don't give yourself time to uh what's the word? Um uh justify it. Yeah. So I've just justified very quickly as an example. I had a busy day. Um, I've, I've had fear all day, so I'm going to rest tonight. Um, I've got to do the garden tomorrow and, yes. do, and take the dogs out tomorrow, so I should re I should rest today. Rubbish. If I do a workout, I'm going to be fitter and stronger and have more energy yes. tomorrow. You know, yeah. If I sit around on the sofa all day, I'm going to be more blah. 
you know? So yes, go and do it. But if I give my, my, myself a chance to justify it, your brain is very intelligent, yes. very yeah. clever. So it's like, well, I can think of all these reasons. Now I don't feel guilty. Mm. I've got a reason to sit down and do nothing. Yeah. Um, and it's, it comes with the same with children. Um, but the amount of times I've, I've been with my daughter all day and it's like, should I do a workout? She's asleep. Or maybe I'll tidy up. That's that's going to justify yeah. it. That'll appease the guilt. Yeah. I'll tidy up. It takes two minutes to tidy yeah. up. We've got, you can see the boxes. We don't tidy up. We throw everything in the box because she's going to throw it back out. Yeah. So we've got boxes in each room. It takes two minutes. And I think, right, put them away. Don't think about it. Go straight and do a workout. Yeah. Put something online or just go for a, like, go for a walk if you've got something to look after. Just do something. And then afterwards, I guarantee you will sit down and go, I am glad I've done it. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, even when they've started work out, nobody goes, wish I hadn't started this work out, wish I'd sat in the sofa and done nothing. Yeah. Because you will feel even better and less guilty after the workout. Mm. So it, it's like you said, just do it. It's I know it's very easy, just do it. But it's the same as then voices make a big difference. It's like having uh, a politician in your brain, mm -hmm. you know, really. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's that yeah. devil in angel. Yeah. He was a do work at the devil's going to your devil the age of work. Yeah, you know, yeah, you've been tired, you know, you've yeah. been working all week, yeah. you can deserve this. Yeah. Deserve and it. at my age, yeah. you're an old man, you'll just get more injuries. <laughs> like, no, I want to stay young, do a workout. Yeah. Is um, that other voice to say, no, if you don't work out, you will get injured, you yeah. know, and things like that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And then like, you can sit yeah. arguing, now yeah. it's gone yeah. by, oh, I should just do a workout. <laughs> But I tell you what I do. I, I, I might sometimes I might be shattered. So yeah. there is sometimes when you're actually shattered. Or I've just had COVID a couple of weeks ago, and on the, when I was recovering, so I was really bad for a few weeks. Um, I was embarrassed to say even an ambulance came out. So I didn't want them to. But they came out, and when I was recovering, um, I went back to teach a class, and it just floored me. I, yeah. was, I was I was back. I was sent me back three days. I couldn't do anything. And what I did do was I sat on the sofa. I got a band. And I just did some exercise sitting there and I could really feel the muscles. I wasn't getting big or anything, but like we were saying before, I was still using the muscles. So I wasn't, I wasn't going backwards. Yeah. Which for, and I'm sure you're the same, when you've trained for so many years, the worst thing in the world is being injured or being sick yeah. and not exercise. You think, oh, I'm, I'm setting me back, myself back months. You're not. Yeah. But in your head, you feel like you're setting yourself back. Mm -hmm. So just by sitting, doing some exercises, and putting around my feet, doing biceps over the head, and I would do half an hour. Yeah. And I felt great. So I've done, done a little bit of exercise. Still got the endorphins, I still stimulated your muscles. I watched the film yeah. still. I sat on the sofa yeah. and I still did something. So I guess what I'm saying is a little bit of something is better than doing nothing yeah. at all. Well, you never know where it might lead to. That's the important bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like the next event. Then I thought, right, I'm going to go upstairs because yeah. I've got a studio upstairs. So I'll go upstairs. I'll do some band work upstairs. I'll pick some dumbbells up. And that was my road to recovery. Yeah. Where if I didn't sit on the sofa and pick those bands up, yeah. my road to recovery might have started a week later and it would start it slower and slower. Yeah. So I, I'm, it, it, I'm, I set my, my pace, but I started earlier and I mm. recovered a lot faster. Yeah. Um, I mean, simple things, you've probably heard this before. If, you, if you're going to sit and watch TV and you can't be able to work out, when the adverts come on, just stand up and sit down. Do some yeah. squats. Changes your, changes your mind as uh -huh. much as, you know, actually moving, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Turn around, do some press-ups on the sofa. Yeah. So every advert, do something else. Stand do some lunges. You can yeah. do lunges, squats, press-ups, any way you want. Yeah. And then sit down and watch a program again. It's amazing. Uh, now that your husband's going to say, what are you doing, you <laughs> stupid woman? But, or oh, oh, stupid man, but... They'll just sit there. Eventually, if you keep, this is another thing as well, what I find with couples is one is in the mindset, I want to get fit. Yeah. I'm sick of this. We've been eating takeaways and we're putting on weight. Now the kids are older. I want to, I want to get fit. And what I find is it's always one wants to, one doesn't. Yeah. And the one that doesn't, it's very easy to break the other one down. Mm -hmm. Like we've just said, it's very hard to get going. Yeah. So if you've got somebody else going, start next week. Yeah. Brilliant. There's, there's, there's an extra voice. voice yeah. Yeah. Or do you fancy a takeaway? Yeah. Now, when you look by yourself, you don't say, well, I get a takeaway. You look in the fridge yeah. and you, you cook whatever's there. Yeah. But if, if your girlfriend or boyfriend says, fancy a takeaway, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. You go and answer the door. That's how lazy we are now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'd rather spend money and you walk to the door to get it. So I'll yeah. buy it. It's very hot to say, no, I don't want to take it. Yeah. I want you to help you. Yeah. You've now got two voices, haven't you? You've yes. got that left side and then you've got, yeah. Exactly. So, so really yeah. it was 50-50. Yeah. Now it's 75, yeah. 25. But also what I found in a, a client um, said this the other day, she goes, 
uh, husband Mark said, she's on my intensive plan. So my husband Mark said, oh, do you want to take away? And she's a big takeaway girl. And she went, um, she went, no, you know what? I've got some, I've got some food prepared and I'm looking forward to it. And he couldn't believe it. And she had that. And the next night he said, you know what? I want that now. Yeah. So she, she, she stuck her heels in, stayed strong and actually swayed it around the other way. Brilliant. That the, the body yeah. had turned into goodie with her. Yeah. And now they're both eating well. That's excellent. And yeah. feeling great as well. Yeah. Um, the five second rule, I think that comes from the book by Mal Robbins, I, I believe. That, it's a girl rule. It's a girl. Yes, yeah. it was a good, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think I've seen her on a podcast yeah. as a woman. It's a, it's a good one. It, she was describing it, it's like, if you count to five or count down or either way, you have to react. Yes. That was the concept that it yeah. changes your motion. I think, the, the, yeah. I think the concept is don't think. Yeah. Just do. And a good example, I remember this when I, when I was teaching my classes, I used to go to the gym afterwards. And sometimes after a class, it's very, I might have two or three clients and I'll do two, like an hour class, two yeah. hours. It's very easy to go, well, it's half past seven, eight o'clock. I've done classes. I don't really need to go to the gym. Yeah. I want to, I've planned it. Now, once I remember, I'd always think, well, I wonder, and I would say 80% of the time, I'll always do it. Yeah. Um, well, I might take the dogs for a walk, I'll do something. And I remember once I read, I was really knackered after class and I was so tired, I didn't think about what I was doing. And I had everything prepared. I picked my bag up, got in the car, and I was driving to the gym. And I was like, when did I get here? And I, I had a big smile on my face because I was thinking, you know what? If I had this thought back at the house, yeah. I might not even be sitting in the car. Yeah. I might be in the shower, ready to chill. And I thought, that's what I need to do. Stop thinking. Yeah. Stop overanalyzing things. Stop looking for get out plans. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. If you see in the morning, I'm going to the gym after work, go to the, go to the gym, gym after, after work. work. Just uh -huh. do it. Just uh -huh. react to it. Unless somebody dies, you have a car crash or anything like that, go to the gym. Yeah. You know, if you have a normal day at work, which, hey, days at work are hard, mm -hmm. I get it. But don't justify, I've had a hard day at work to not go to the gym. Yeah. If you've had a hard day at work, go to the gym it'll be stress relief. Yeah. It's a bit like I never got the idea, and I know no, loads of blokes will, will say the opposite, but I've got a lot of friends that just, oh, I had a bad day at work, I'm going I'm to go on a drink. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you're going to feel even worse tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. I never got that. Yeah. I, don't get us wrong, when I was younger, I like to drink, I like to get drunk and be happy yeah. and party, but if I'm having a bad time or I'm having a bad day or whatever, I'm not going to go drink. No. I want to sort out my problem. Mm with a clear head, so I feel good. Now, when I sort the problem out, I might have a drink after that. Yeah. Great, problem solved, let's yeah. have a drink. But I never got that to make yourself worse. Here's another one. It's when people are starting diets on the weekend. So you start a diet on a Monday. And my analogy is, if you're gonna tidy the house tomorrow, are you gonna make it even messier today? Probably not. Hmm. But if you're gonna start a diet tomorrow, are you gonna eat more crap food tonight to make your diet even harder tomorrow. And the majority of people, do you want to start a diet tomorrow? Yeah. Well, we have a takeaway. Let's get that spin it. Let's yeah. push that wine off. Yeah. Okay. You're already in a bad position. Yeah. That's why you're going to start a diet. And now you set yourself up to fail by yeah. eating even more crap. And also your taste buds, after you have that takeaway, the next day, are we going to have oats? I don't know. Fancy some bacon and some bacon. Yeah. You know, it's it's I don't know why people do it, but it's almost like a justification why they should eat bad that mm -hmm. night, almost, mm -hmm. on an unconscious point of view. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, we'll start tomorrow, so why don't we just finish that wine off and eat, mm -hmm. have a takeaway? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Let's celebrate starting the diet before we do the diet. <laughs> yeah. And here's another thing, and 50% of those people that have a big takeaway or eat crap the night before, they wake up the next day, can be bothered, let's start next week. So they ate really badly to justify the diet that they didn't do in the first place that they're going to do next week. Yeah. That's what they do next weekend. Let's have another takeaway because yeah. it, and it's the, it's this wheel we get on. Yeah, it is. Where it's yeah. just no, I don't eat crap. Let's eat healthy. Let's get a good night's sleep and start the day fresh and have a good meal. Yeah, to, uh, to start it is amazing how uh, obviously as human beings we go for our comforts and what we're used to. Yeah, and it's so hard for the everyday person to get out, out of. Mm -hmm. Obviously, where we are in fitness and we've partly went through probably some sort of transformation around somewhere, mm -hmm. we've kind of linked rewards to having doing exercise and eating well because that's our, in our coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think we've seen the rewards. Yeah. So it's a bit like we've been paid already mm -hmm. where, you know, if, if, I've been, if I know I'm going to get a thousand pound the end of the week, 
I'm more likely to go back to work next week. Mm. Where if people say you might get a thousand pounds, yeah, and they then they work the week, but they fall off the diet a little bit. Oh, you're not getting a thousand pounds. They've done sixty seven percent of the diet, yeah, but they haven't got any results. Mm. So it's like, or they uh, think they haven't got the results. Yeah, well, that's yeah. another thing yeah. as well. The, the the scales haven't gone down. I've done this. I've done that. So yes, but the skills aren't going to go yeah. down. Just His energy's yet. gone up. You feel yeah. better. Yeah. You know, all these things, but they're just but, focused on one. Well, they? Yeah. When people, people on my, oh, I've just, I've just lost five pound this week. I've got, I've got whatever. And five, by the way, five pounds is a lot for a week. Five pound over the last two weeks, say. Um, and my first thing is, how do you feel? Mm. It's not well done. You're light there. You've lost body fat. How do you feel? How's your sleep? How do you look? How's your energy levels? And that's changed their mindset. Actually, yes, I am sleeping better. Yeah. I wake up full of energy. I want to eat better foods. And I'm like, doesn't that feel good? Yes, it does. Right. So that's your goal now. That's your motivation. Not the scales. The scales are going to happen. You know, but if you are just motivated by the weight, the scales going down, eventually they're not going to go down anymore. Yeah. So if you want to lose a stone, and um, hey, let's say you lose a stone in two months. Well, what's your motivation at the end of two months? Yeah, I've, I've hit my goal. Oh, let's celebrate by going out. <laughs> and go back into the cycle. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then it's, that, it's yeah. that ricochet move where if it's like, I've lost my stone, but I've got loads of energy. I play with my children a lot more. I yeah. don't sit on the sofa going, in five minutes, in five minutes, which we've all done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or in the morning when they wake you up at six o'clock, when the alarm goes up, five minutes, but you just bounce out of bed. Yeah. Let's play. Now, look at the ramifications of that. You feel better. You look better. Your husband probably likes you more as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. he feels better because he he's seen how good you feel, so he wants to eat better. Yeah, I'm going to stop training. I want what you've got. You know, this natural high. Yeah, but also your kids are going to reap the benefits as well. Mummy mm. plays with kids. I don't care what people say. You can buy them the best presents, give them money, whatever. Kids love attention of yeah. their parents. Yeah, they like their time. Yes spoil them every now and then birthdays christmas and stuff not too much was i see yeah. christmas starts on christmas eve now that never <laughs> happened for me um but i think you're going to get a lot more from your child as well mm. you know um if you spend time with them yeah and also the more you, the time you spend with your child the the more that child's going to adapt to what you need mm. as well and also like i mean i can go i can say to fear now she's all, i've said this since three and i'm teaching her the clock so, so you see this big hand, when that big hand gets to here, then you've got daddy time. But from there to there is my time. Yeah. And I'm going to go in the gym. Or I'm going to watch something on TV. So it's my TV time. Yeah. She has Netflix on all the time. So it's my dad time. You can draw, you can do this. Because I do also, I know I've said time with the parent. I do think kids need to have time by themselves. Yes. To yeah. learn, to, to let, enjoy their own time. And learn the boundaries, of course. Which yes. is what you kind of done there, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Well, I don't know if you noticed this, but what, what me and Fia do is rather than her going, daddy, daddy, and I'm talking to you. Yeah. And I don't want it. We're not more important than my daughter. So if me and my daughter are talking, you shouldn't be saying, hey, David. Yeah. You know, that's about respect. But vice versa, when we're talking, yeah. my daughter shouldn't put it to us. Yes. It's just respect. I don't care how old you are. It's whoever's talking first, yeah. the other person wins. An element of manners, isn't it, what you're teaching? Exactly, yeah. yes. And now we understand manners. But what she does, instead of saying, daddy, daddy, and then pulling me thing, if she sees me talk to somebody, she comes over and squeezes my hand. Yeah. And then I squeeze her hand back so she knows that I know she's going to get my attention. Yeah. And she learns patience that way, but it's, it's she's calm as well because I find with kids, it's a bit like a dog barking. Um, if they go, daddy, 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 they, get, they work yeah, themselves no, no. up. Yeah. And eventually, she'll forget what she even wants me for. <laughs> you know, it's like, what do you want? Um, <laughs> just your attention. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're giving him all my other attention. But she squeezed my hand. She stays there very calmly. Yeah. And then when we're finished, or there's a break, what do you want, sweetheart? Okay, now that. Good girl. She always gets praise. Good girl. And off she goes, and then we're back to But it's a much nicer way than just that constant shout. Yeah. Um, I always remember my sister came across from canada when my my mom was very ill and her son was about the same age as yeah felix who's about four and it was just mommy 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 mom mommy mom and i think uh, family guy do a very good take on that and uh and she said felix while you're in grandma's house call me dawn <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to hear mom or mommy again and uh, i don't know if he did but i, I remember I saying that to him and I, I get it it's like 
oh, once when, you start talking, it's great. But it's like, God, daddy, yeah. daddy. And now what, she, what she's doing that, and she knows it winds me up. She's, uh, she's going, what is it again? What we're doing now, are you going to have breakfast? What we're doing after breakfast, you're going to play. What we're doing after, and it's like, and she'll go through the whole day. And, <laughs> and what we do when we go to sleep, you wake up, we do it all again. And what's that? It's like, I'll tell you some of what got, which pops in my mind was just going back to the food element. Because obviously in the way she lives two worlds. Yes. Do you reckon it would be different if she was just in one world, if yes. you have to call it that way? Because I know how you have to, well, not have to, but there's certain things she would eat which maybe not be your first choice. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would be there anyway, or do you think it is an influence of having, if you like, two worlds? It is because I think, put it this way, um, kids will always have the easy option or the, yeah. or the nice option. So if you've got two kids and one's being naughty and one's being good, it'll probably transcend into both being naughty because being naughty <laughs> is fun. <right? laughs> Drawing on walls and yeah. being a mess. If you've got one kid tying up, the other kid's not going to join. The other the kid tying up is going to start making a mess and draw the wall. So the same is she, so Sophia, and we've talked to Sophia about this, is she watches different TV shows here. She yeah. does different games here. So she's a little bit of a different child here. Yeah. But I don't know what you were like, but when I went to my grandparents, this is the only way, because I, 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 my parents were a unit till I was about 16. So if I went to my nanas and my aunties and my grandparents, yeah, I was a different child. Yeah, I was a bit better behaved, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I never got smacked or hit off my grandparents, but I had a bit more respect. Mm. And just thinking now, maybe it's because I know my parents are my boss kind of thing. Yeah. And then the grandparents are the boss of the boss. <laughs> you know? like, my mom tells me off and my grand tells my mom off. Yeah. So like an automatic so, uh, hierarchy. Something. Yeah. They're really, yeah. really tough then. Yeah. You know, like they're so high. So you automatically, and like, they spoil me with sweeties, but I'm going to be really, really good when I'm here. And I yeah. was. I, I was more, especially my mum's side, the Scottish side. Yeah. They were very strict. Um, so I was I was much better. So, so and I'm not saying, I'm, I'm me and a mum, hopefully we're equal, and she says equal, but we're both different people. Yes. So her personality, her mum, she changes when she's here to when she goes to her mom's yes. or when she goes to her grand's and she goes to my dad's and stuff. So I think she's different. So going back to the food nutrition, whatever she eats down there might be completely different what she eats up here. Mm -hmm. But she probably just wants the nice stuff here and the nice stuff down there. Yes. So if she had her way, she's probably going down there saying, I want white yogurt. Yeah. And I want unicorn food, which is a cereal, which we yes. <laughs> just call unicorn food. <laughs> And when she comes up here, she doesn't actually ask. She asks for the food I've got. So maybe, but I do think working to, if you were a, more of a team unit. So you and your girlfriend would be saying, right, this is what you're eating today. Mm. You know, where if I say this, she's never said it yet, but I'm sure she probably will. Mommy doesn't say I'll do that. She's yeah. never said that yet, but I'm expecting it. Yeah, she's only four. And she probably will work it out, you know, because mm. you see other children saying that. They'll, they'll go with the softer parent. Yes. Can I have some sweeties? Go and ask your dad. Yes. Because your dad will yeah. say no. You know, it's that. So it's different. Um, and I know with with my girlfriend, she's frightening my girlfriend. Um, she's she's never told her off. But we all say, are you scared of Shami? And she goes, yes. And, she, <laughs> and she, she's, she's better behaved for Shami. Yeah. And it's like, I can, I can go upstairs and maybe I'll have a nap and Shami's looking after her. And I'm like, I'll come downstairs and she's sitting there, good, good as gold, and yeah. Shami's on her phone and like, I can't use my phone around her. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? And I'm, I'm actually annoyed. <laughs> like, no, I want her to treat you the way she treats me. But I did, I, I've seen this uh, was psychology about parents and I'm not saying anything about the, the mother and father here, but about me and her father, mother. But it's, Apparently, I don't know if this is true, they treat the parent they respect the most or the one they feel the most secure with. Yeah. They treat them the worst. Yes. Because they know that parent will never the most comfortable. Yeah. But trust they'll, them. they'll, they'll yeah. never let them go. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they what yeah. crap they give them, yeah. they will always look after them. And you've probably seen it there. When when we had an argument, and yeah. I'll I'll tell her off yeah. very sternly, where yeah. she's like, you know, and then I, I automatically I'm like I still love you though. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, she's like she knows you've got that weakness. Uh -huh. yeah. and, then, and then she's well, you've probably seen it. She's like, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, mm, maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but it's it's hard. It's, yeah, it's yeah, really hard. It uh -huh. And you know, when you haven't got the full time as well, yeah. 
I do think not having a full time and sharing it is good though, because <laughs> let me get this straight, right? And I'll be completely honest. When she goes, it's like, ah, yeah, yeah I can eat well, I can go to the gym whenever yeah. I want, I've got my life back. Yeah. But then after I've done that for two or three days, like, oh, yeah, you feel a little bit lost. Yeah, yeah. I want to play with her again. Yeah, I want yeah. to do this with her. So it, it's it's a happy music. Yeah. 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 If someone listening, is there any final thoughts for someone who's a mother who's maybe want to get fitter and you know they're struggling with juggling? you know, family life and stuff. Right, my my top tips would be, nutrition-wise, prepare your food. If it's prepared, um, so I know it takes a little bit more time, uh, but as soon as the child's gone to bed, I wouldn't do it at nap time. <laughs> Once the baby or infant's gone to bed, get downstairs, prepare your food. Cook four big chicken breasts mm. or something. So you've got four meals, put some rice in there, some vegetables, yeah. and that's a quick, in the microwave, heat it up. And also, I would advise them eat with the child. Yeah. But my biggest problem, which I was doing, it, is I was I was feeding Sophia, and then I was keeping her tidy. I was doing the dishes, and then once she's fed, tidy up, and then I'll, I'll right now I'll eat myself and start cooking. Yeah. Where she wants your attention, so it's like, oh, you know what? I've got time. I'll just eat rubbish. Mm. So and it's prepared, and she, while she's eating, she's occupied. You know, and also give them big food. Give them a lot. I know they won't eat it, but there's a chance they might, but also it takes time. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> give, give them food that's hard to eat. Yeah. So the longer it takes to eat, the more time you've got, but sit down and eat with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know you're going to eat, which yeah. is very important. Hit your protein. Big protein is in every meal. It becomes a family ritual, by the way, with the, the sit yes. down with them and eating, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And what I find with Sophia, if something she, she might be sitting at the table and she's got all that drones everywhere, so I'll sit, I've got a kitchen bench, so I'll yeah. sit there. And then she'll come and say, Daddy, I want to, and she'll come and sit next to me. Yeah. It's like, that's fine, you can. Um, I mean, maybe I should move the drawers, but again, take time. Um, so nutrition, yeah. prepare your food, which I tell my clients anywhere, yeah. anyway, but just do it. And once you get in a routine of like maybe twice a week, getting food prepared, even it's one meal a day, you know, you can have overnight oats for breakfast. Yeah. Done. You know, yeah. you know, have four or five. That's so them. easy to make. As well. So yeah. easy. And if you don't know what overnight oats is, oats in plastic, in some Tupperware, uh, fill it. You can use milk, water, apple juice is lovely. Just up to the level of oats. Uh, I'll put some goji berries in some put seeds. Whatever you want with it. Yeah. Top. yeah. Leave it in the fridge. Wake up the next morning. Big job of uh, Greek yogurt. That's your breakfast. Yeah. And it's delicious. It's it's very like yeah. dessert, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and then if you've got some veg some like rice grains lentils you can buy that in packets put that in individual ones with some vegetables you can reheat it i eat it cold reheat it in the microwave it takes two minutes but it's prepared yeah and then you're having at least two good consistent meals every day yeah and it's quick and easy yeah. as well um in terms of exercise exercise i think we've I think you've kind of covered it yeah said, just go out your way to move isn't uh -huh. it really Go online. We both we both have online programs. Yeah. There's so many out there. Yeah. But get something online. Do it from home. I think going to the gym when you've got a kid doesn't really work. The time constraints, especially if you're working as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, once they go to school and stuff, mm. that changes. Uh, I can't wait. She goes to school in September. Um, so little and often. You know, don't think you've got to do a full hour. Yeah. Uh, even 20 minutes, half an hour, that's enough. 10 minutes yeah my my intensity program i do half an hour class my intensity is 10 minutes but what i try and get people to do is 10 minutes twice a day so it'll be more than even yes um, yeah. so it is still 20 minutes but it's spread and you can if you can't find 10 minutes a day forget yeah. it yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. forget it you ain't yeah. ever exercising 10, <laughs> 10 minutes um and just something gentle and also you can take take them to the park get out there um soft play yeah. You know, up until age of four, you can go on the soft play with them, crawl around, play with them, stay active, hide and seek. We used to have one, we used to get a little doggy. It was called Woof Woof. Yeah. And from the age, as soon as she could walk, we had Woof Woof. She's still going there somewhere. She gets tickets and goes, Woof Woof. And it was like hide and seek. She would hide her eyes, I would hide it somewhere, and yeah. she'd have to run around and find it, find it. Now, when she's doing that, you could be doing squats or anything, or you could be chasing after her. You know, you've got to find it, I'm going to catch it. So you get your steps in. Yeah. But also you're wearing your child out. <laughs> so that's very important as well. If you can get your child exercise with you, brilliant, because they will sleep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, little and often. Same that's as food, really. Good. Yeah, yeah. But also think about food quality. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. think about the amount. Think about the quality. If you're getting good quality food inside, you won't have to count your calories. 
you'll have enough energy um, and it's going to be satiating. It's going to fill you up where if you're just getting like a, a McDonald's yeah. packed of crisps, you're going to be hungry within an hour, mm. you know? And, and, and then your energy level is going to be low as well. Uh -huh. yes. And guess what? You keep doing that throughout the day. Are you going to then, once your child goes to bed, are you then going to make food? No, you're yeah. going to get a takeaway and you're going to justify it by, I've ate rubbish all day. I can't be bothered. I'm I think tired. I had a hard day to, to know these voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you that obviously my fitness trainer is a way to connect with you. Mm -hmm. But before we go, you have to mention about the dad jokes because I'm finding this <laughs> absolutely <laughs> right. Right. So I am, I am known for bad jokes, which by the way, I think are hilarious. Me too. So, <laughs> so my girlfriend, my family, my friends, they, I, I love bad jokes. And I love good jokes as well. So I'm on TikTok. It's my, my link on TikTok is my fitness trainer, all one word, my fitness trainer. And I would say every, this, this work gets on there, but every two workouts, I will drop a dad joke and the, it's, <laughs> they are funny, but the kind of the joke to where you just go, Oh my God, but you'll have yeah. a smile on your face. I guarantee yeah, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's just lighthearted stuff. Some Rudy ones as well. Yeah. But it's nothing nasty. It's yeah. just fun. And of course, you give advice and all that on there as well. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. There's going to be more yeah. and more advice. There's, there's yeah. lots of workouts, uh, advice and exercise, nutrition, uh, tips. Um, actually, here's a quick yeah, yeah, one, yeah. one quick tip, and this is great for mothers as well, is every time you have, a, like we said, if you're having like a quick McDonald's or some crisps or some chips off your kid's plate, take a photograph of it. Save it in a file what you've ate or whatever, nutrition, saving your file. At the end of the day, when you are shattered and you're thinking, will I get a takeaway? Just go back through what you've ate that day and you'll be shocked because like I say, our brains will justify anything to be able to eat whatever you want. So you get the end of the day and like we just both said there, I have a takeaway. I haven't ate much today. I've justified it. But if you look at the rubbish or the poor nutrition you've had, I haven't ate much, but it's been rubbish. I need some good, healthy food. Mm. And just by looking at those photographs, it'll set your brain in a completely different avenue and you hopefully won't have that takeaway. Yeah, I think that's a good way to finish, mate. It's been great to have you. It's always you great too. to talk to you. You too. And you then, uh, seen it. Obviously, we'll connect back again. Definitely. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, when I stop my podcasts, you're on mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Catch up soon. See you later.